Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Ready to Love. This is season four, episode two. Y'all know the casting special came on last week. That was episode one. And we are back for some more of the love or lust or sex or whatever it is they do, okay? But thank you for tuning in to my video. Y'all know to subscribe to my channel to become a whole Jay Bird. J Bird, dun 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 dun, and all that goodness and stuff. Y'all know the same old, same old. Go ahead, check the description box. All the information down there is what you need. What to follow me at to become a member of my channel, to subscribe to my other channel, to shop my Teespring merchandise. Okay, y'all know to like the video, comment in the comment section, to hit the share button, to share it on your social media, to relax, to relate, to release, to center yourself and everyone around you and to inhale and to exhale because that's what to do okay y'all know to follow me on social media j underscore leaks underscore corner on ig and just jaylee's corner on twitter and to like and subscribe and y'all know it's still saturday and i told y'all in every video i did today i would not be on camera okay i'm resting my face anyway but y'all know I got, you know, things to still enlighten your eyeballs, which is pictures from the episode, okay? But yeah, you know, last week was a good little episode meeting on the cast. I like they're doing that because it's, it's a headache when we get to the um little mix or whatever. We don't know who anybody is, trying to figure out who they are and take notes and all of that, okay? So boom. All the cast right here, all 20 hopeful to 10 men, to 10 women, okay, all looking like something around here, okay? So we get to the little mixer, okay? We see they all there dressed all nice or whatever. We also know that at the end of the day, two people will go home from the contest. Not the contest, but the dating show. I still wish they did not send people home on day one. I really wish they didn't send anybody home until like day three. Give the people time to get to know each other, okay? Because I say it every season, if helping them find love is the actual plan, you can expect them to figure out what they do or don't like based on one interaction on one day, okay? Now, even though you always know up front who you, who you might like or whatever, you never know if they was having a bad day. They really need to push off sending someone home until like episode two, okay? Give the, the episode one to you like one or two days worth of stuff. Not one day of them sitting around just chit and chatting, okay? But that's just me trying to do what produce they show. So we get a couple of things that happened this particular episode. Let's start with Corey. Corey, okay, where's Corey? Corey's on the bottom row, the second guy in the green jacket. That's Corey. Corey came in, guns are blazing, running game instantly, copying and pasting information to each woman to have a generic conversation, okay? We've seen him talking to Courtney up in the top, who has her natural, natural curls out. We see him talking to, um, what's her name? Carrie with the braids, okay? And I'm like, what's going on here? He running game, okay? Hey, uh, Courtney, okay, we have good chemistry, okay? Good energy. You want to go on a date? She's like, sure. We can go on a date. He then pulls Carrie to the side, okay, with the braids. Hey, girl, we have good chemistry. Is you free Friday, Saturday, or Sunday for a little date? And she's like, well, I mean, I guess so, but she's also confused. Like, how, where's his chemistry? He's we ain't even talked. So how do we have a chemistry? But I guess I'll go on a date with him. Now, when he was talking to, not even he, at the bottom, okay, we see Theo, who's in the white suit, was talking to Sabrina in the night of the orange dress or whatever. And Corey walked up, hey, can I borrow for about 45 seconds? I'm like, what you want for 45 seconds? Why well, I'm only worth 45 seconds, Corey. What do you want, Corey? And he then whispers in her ear, do you find me attractive? I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Why you care? Okay. And I felt like, first of all, Corey asked, going to go home immediately. Okay. Corey and also the man Lamont, who I'll get into later. Okay. But again, 
one because she when he asked her, Do you find me attractive? And I'm like, Why are you whispering like it's supposed to be sexy? Okay. And she was like, Um, I haven't talked to you yet. I don't know you yet. You know I'm saying, you know, for me, the physical means nothing. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So are you available Friday? You no, know, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. She was she was like, Um, I'm gonna talk to you later. Because I don't know. And again, I'm like, you running the saying is the whole copy and paste. Copy and paste. I'm like, you do know all these women are going, like, have you watched the show? Have you watched the show? I'm like, has he not watched the show? And he do remind me of last season's Troy. The only difference is Troy was creepy. Like, Troy made me feel, like, Troy was touching people and kissing foreheads and kissing cheeks and offering trips to islands, kidnapping women or whatever. So Troy was a weird, creepy dude. Corey isn't creepy, but he's pushy and he's like a little bit, eh, I don't want that energy or whatever. But again, he does remind me of Troy, okay? I, just, I don't think he's going to kidnap anybody, but I think he going to ask everybody to date him, okay? But I'm like, boy, whatever. Now, we also see, and I, he must not have watched last season. I just, I just can't think he must not have watched, and that's just stupid for him uh, not to do. Now, we also see this, see Camille and Cornelius, okay, who's up in the top corner, okay, with the green dress, that's Camille, and then Cornelius. I think Cornelius is very, very cute um, in real life. I think he's very, very handsome in his confessional, okay, but I want to, you know, I'm trying to wait to get confessional confessional screenshots until we see who's on, like, episode five, okay? Um, but, yeah, I like Corny's face. But he's, you know, having a good time with Camille, who's a teacher, and they vibe it, okay? And she say, he my boyfriend now, okay? We go together, okay? And she was joking, but she was also dead ass serious so much so that when he was, like, going away, she's like, don't forget to come back, you know what I'm saying? Don't be out there lollygagging with them other people. And he like, yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, but he like, I'm not going to put all my eggs in one basket. I think we do have a bit of a connection, but I don't have time to only focus on one person. It's day one. And we then see him later on that night talking to Courtney, okay? And they have a good little connection or whatever. You know what I'm saying? She brings up how she's, she's a single mom and how she changed um, once she had a child. Because she just had to stop and seeing, for one, you know, accepting things that ain't cool. And, you know, people wanted her to be who she used to be in her early 20s. Not who she, who she is now in her 30s. Well, now that she is 30. Now, we do see, what I want to say about this, I feel like Camille is going to be jealous. And not as in she's jealous of the other women, but she wants all the attention. She's not going to like seeing him having any communication with anybody except her. I can see it happening, and it's not going to end well, okay? Now, with Lamont, with Lamont, boom, there go Lamont right here. Lamont, I feel like, is a loner, and he don't had no game yet, okay? He's been single for seven years. He admits it's his own fault because, you know what I'm saying, he's a best and officer or whatever. He's off. He's, he often feels left alone. So he's really looking for a companion or whatever. Um, When he said that he had a void in his life, he had been closed off. I was like, a void closed off? Are you ready for love for real? You're just bored. What's going on with you, sir? Now, when talking to um Aisha, they were talking and having a cool conversation about their jobs or whatever. And because he's in cybersecurity. And when he then mentioned how he also liked doing spoken word, he did a bit of spoken word to her. And she didn't like it. She said it rubs her the wrong way because she felt like he just spit some bar on her. Like she felt like he was a rapper that's rapping to her. Um, I do I take some spoken word differently than rapping, even though I see the connection between the two, but I do think. He maybe shouldn't have used the word. I think in his, I, I, I feel like in his spoken word rap of it all, I think he said the word dick. And you can't say the word dick in spoken word to someone you just met because, like, why would you do that, sir? So I do think him using the word dick probably turned her off a little bit more than anything else or whatever. And I was like, mm, 
Mm-mm. He just lost someone. Anyway, let's get to Sabrina and Walter. Now, when they both walked in, they were one of the first people who came into the, to the mixer. And they both said how they felt an instant connection to the other one. Okay, they both said that. He like, you know, she was giving me good energy. I gave some back and I like her. Okay, we can see where that go. Now, later on in the day, when they're sitting around chitting, chatting, um, having a good old conversation, saying it's about this and about that. And, you know, she brought up how, you know, it was hard being a single mom. And she was also helping take care of her older parents who were like in their 80s. Um, I think she said her mom is a caregiver for her dad, but she also has to help her mom. So it's a lot on her plate. And she started crying. Okay, because she's like, she's like, I've never had anybody to be able to, you know, who I opened up about this too. And you seem just like, I don't know, I just opened up. And then he brings up how he knows exactly what she means because he had to take care of his mom um until the day she died. He like she his mom died in his arms because he was her caretaker. So again he gets what she means by you know how hard life is as a caretaker of one one or two parents. Okay. And then it's, it was cute for them both to feel like their connection grew deeper by them having this conversation. Okay. Now earlier we did see Walter Talking to, I think he was talking to somebody else again about how his wife passed away back when he was 28 years old, you know, back in 2003, and how he had dated since then. He had gotten close to getting, you know, engaged and or married, but no cigar. But he said he is ready now to move on with somebody and have his person. Walter's a very likable guy, and I really hope he isn't a wolf in sheep's clothing because that would piss me off, okay? Now, let's get to Corey. Corey was sitting around with a few of the ladies chitting, chatting or whatever, and they were saying, the women was like saying who they liked. Now, one girl was saying how she liked Walter. I can think of which girl that would may have been Sabrina and who's in the orange dressed in the blonde hair who's kind of cut off. And when she said that, they then asked Corey, well, Corey, who are you feeling? You know, what's going on with you? Now, he then say, all oh, the ladies here, you know what I'm saying, have some good energy. I'm like, that ain't what they asked you, sir. That's not what they asked you. And then when Sabrina then said, oh, yeah, I was wondering because you asked me on a date for the weekend. And this was when he realized I fucked up, okay? Because, again, you sitting around with the women, you ask on dates. Why would you sit there knowing you've asked three of the four women sitting here on a date in the same weekend, okay? Now, when Sabrina said, oh, he, he asked me on a date, Carrie, like, oh, Carrie, who's in the bluish dress, was like, really? Oh, did he also tell you that he felt good energy or good chemistry with you? She was like, yeah, he did say that. I was like, oh, he's busted because again, you can't use the same conversation on this women who are all in the same circle because even though they may not be friends, they're all in the same circle. Have you not? watch this show before they're gonna have conversations about what you have said to them is day one sir what is wrong with you okay now while sitting there with carrie and with sabrina and moomin and i hope i'm pronouncing her name right who's in the orange dress uh with the black hair she then say oh he said they up with me too i'm like what the f- what is wrong with you now he trying to process what he's involved in Okay, he then you know, I you know I had to. So what happened was I had to get y'all outside of the remnants of the other guys around here, okay, to catch y'all attention. So I felt like to do that, okay, I need to go on separate dates with each of y'all to get to I was like, sir, sir. Just say I want to date all of y'all to see which one sticks. That's what it is, okay? And so he then is like, you know, I... so another woman named Shiloh, who was also there, she walked up. And then when she walked up, they asked her, did, 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 did Corey ask you on a date? And all? she was like, yeah, we're going out this. I was like, bitch. When she said, yeah, we're going out this weekend, I was like, oh, he's busted. And he like, I, I done fucked up now. I'm probably going home. Sir, you probably are. Okay, you might be. You might be. Now, we then see Tommy shows up to chit-chat with all the people, with the ladies, with the men, to see who they do like who they do not like, and who they feel like, you know, who needs to go home, 
who do you feel is not ready to love? Okay. Now the men say they like different people, whatever. It doesn't really matter right now who they like because it's too early to care about who they like. What matters right now is who they don't like. Okay. And the men said they did not like uh Tasia, who was in the green dress, Libba, who's in the middle, and then Carrie, who's you know in the pink. And they said to see her, just they felt like she kept rapid firing questions. Um, and it kind of wasn't a spark. And then with Libba, who's in the middle, um, I think I forgot which guy it was. One of the guys said she seemed a bit scatterbrained, and so it was weird. And she did because she was talking to it was one guy and a girl and her having a conversation, and she did seem like not scatterbrained. But, like, she felt out of place and was trying to fit in. So, it came off a bit awkward. So, I got what he meant. But I don't know either. Okay. Now, with Carrie, it was really just, I think, wall through said Like, he did, not, he, did, he did not have a physical connect with her. So, it wasn't anything bad. But that's the only person who he had a conversation with who he, you know, was like, you know, it, you know, it would not be a thing between me and her. So it wasn't a bad thing or whatever. Well, I mean, I guess it wasn't a bad thing. So when the time he talks to the women who the women don't like, okay. Now the women said Lamont, who was first in the black shirt, Tommy, who was next in the, not Tommy, Tyrone, who was in the middle. Tyrone looks familiar. I don't know if he's been on something else before, but for some reason, I know that man. I just do not know from where, okay? But again, um, Lamont, who's the first one, Tyrone, who's in the middle, and then Corey, for obvious reasons, is on the end. Now, Corey, to me again, is another Troy, and I don't get why he don't get that, okay? So they all sitting around, okay, because now it's time to figure out who's going to go home, okay? Who would Tommy say is the one to go home? So the first, well, I'm, I'm going to leave it be. So each person was shocked to hear their name. Um, Because the bottom two men was Lamont and Corey. Okay. But we're going to guys. So yeah, Lamont and Corey were the last two guys. Now the last two girls, well, the bottom two girls was between um, Libba and Tashia. So again, the middle person and the person on the end in the green dress. Now, both women were completely shocked that they were in the bottom suit. Both were completely like, what? Like me? No. And it's like, well, yeah. Now, for the men, um, Corey wasn't shocked. <sighs> Lamont kind of was, but also kind of wasn't. So it was like, whatever. And the two people going home, dun, 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 is Lamont and Libba. Now, when Lamont left, he spoke in spoken word. I'm like, see, stop doing that. Sometimes let's have a regular conversation. And then with Libba, Libba said how, you know what I'm saying, the men got it right because, you know, her love wasn't there and it's okay. If they knew she wasn't the one, it's okay for them to send her home. And I'm like, well, I guess that is a great thing to do. Now, to see her, who's in the green dress, was pissed. That she was in the bottom. Saying how I have four numbers in my phone. How I got four numbers in my phone and now I'm in the bottom too. Well, because man, the other six probably didn't like you. So it's like it's weird that they think all the guys will like them because some like them. I'm like, y'all do know y'all sent people home too. So it's like you can't be acting like you surprised that it happened. So we now have two people gone from the competition. Okay, who will last to the end of the season? Who do we think? will be the top three couples. Put in the comment section who you think will make it. Now, I'm going to add this on here, okay? I'm going to say, um, I hope Walter and Sabrina make it. And Walter is the one on the bottom row, the first guy with the beard. And then Sabrina is the top row with the short blonde hair, who's next to the guy who got X'd out. I do think they would be... A, Oh shit, girl, my eyes smell this scared the crap out of me. Um, so I do think they would be a cute couple. I also feel like the guy, Phil, who was the second row, the first guy, I want to see Phil for some reason 
with Carrie. I don't know why. And Carrie is top row with the braids. I want to see them two together. So those are the only two people I think would be a couple. Now, Naeem, who was the bald head guy on the second row next to the ex out lady. That's Naeem. Naeem and what was her name at the bottom? I got the, these names. The girl on the bottom row, the first girl, I don't know her name is right now. They had a good connection. So there is a possibility for them too. Okay. So those are my top, my three picks for right now, I'm pretty sure. But then, you know, two or three weeks, I'll change it out because again, who knows if they'll make it past next week. But I hope you all enjoyed my review. Okay, next week I'll try to be live for this because we love ready to love. I've been trying to relax this weekend, y'all. Um, I will be live tomorrow around 4:30-ish to do love in marriage Huntsville. That's if I go to bed right now and then can get some sleep and then get up to watch the episode to be live at 4:30. Or I may have to push it back to 530. I'm not sure. But again, I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. And I will see you when I see you. Peace. Mm-hmm.